thing to do to start, you know, with um, doing community science and getting, you know, your family or your children involved. It's, it's a great thing to do and a lot of fun. All right. So now we're going to talk about the City Nature Challenge, April 26th to April 29th. And Deborah is going to tell us a little bit about that. Okay, thank you. Um, it's being sponsored this year by Orange Audubon, the Nature Conservancy that has been sponsoring it for since it started in our area a few years ago, <clears throat> and the Florida Native Plant Society. And the purpose is to document plant and animal wildlife using iNaturalist. Next. Um, so the word bioblitz is used for a biological inventory or biological census. And the primary goal is to get an overall count of the plants, animals, fungi, other organisms that live in a place. And <clears throat> it's kind of a, a kind of a somewhat party atmosphere. It's a coming together, check in, go out and survey and then bring your data in. Next, so this is a little different. It is a bio blitz in that it's a bio next is biological inventory, but this is more on your own. And it's actually more a competition between areas and people. So you're recording your observations on your phone using the iNaturalist app. Um, if you haven't downloaded it yet, it's a free download from uh, the App Store or Google Play, however you get your apps. And so you can be doing observations anywhere in Orange County or in your participating municipality. And I'm saying if, if someone is not in Orange County um, and you can include your own yard, but focus on things growing wild. Okay, next. And you don't need to identify the species yourself in iNaturalist. Um, I, in the past, we've shown you some of the other apps like Seek, and I, I don't use it myself, but I've seen people, and, it, and that brings up the identification more instantly. iNaturalist doesn't do it instantly, but um, other people will weigh in on what it will be in addition to whatever guess you have. Other people being, uh, some amateurs, but also some experts. And then eventually you'll have a research grade um, identification of your organism. Next. And here's an example of that. So these are some observations I've done. I, I tend to take a lot of pictures of different plants. I would, this was from Leonia Preserve. And so different people have suggested identifications on those. I may have put an initial identification, or if I didn't really know anything about it, I might have just hit share and, and turn it in without anything. This guy, Jay Horn, is one I'm actually following because he's very expert on the plants and in our area, and he's identified a lot of stuff on mine. Next. And dividing up the organisms, vascular plants are the majority of what's been identified, let's say in the 2023 City Nature Challenge. So it's it's, it's kind of plant-oriented activity. Invertebrate animals, like different bugs. I mean, anything that you could take a picture of that's stationary is gonna be easier than let's say a bird. But if you can get the picture of the bird, then you can uh, submit it as well. And there is actually a way to use take your eBird lists and in, insert them into iNaturalist, but it's kind of complicated. And um, I'll bring that up again closer to the time. Next. So the City Nature Challenge started in 2016 as a competition between San Francisco, California Academy of Sciences, and Los Angeles, the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles. And this is the 2023 data that San Francisco Bay had 31,911 observations, that many species, that many observers, whereas Los Angeles had that. So Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco was ahead in 2023. I couldn't find who won the first one. Um, but look at all those observers are involved. Next. 
So the dates are April 26th to 29th, four days. And then April 30th to May 5th, identification. And that doesn't really involve us. They're going to take our observations and get the right identifications on them. The experts are going to do that. And that's the way they're going to know the correct number of species. Uh, and then the results are announced on May, on May 6th, Monday. Next. And here are some from last year that Orange County had 3,081 observations, 920 species, and 195 people. But look, um, South Florida had 1,049 people. Tallahassee had 232 people. We're close to that. But um, Alachua County had 275 people. So our goal here in, in presenting this so early is to try to get more people involved. And it's really fun. So um, I hope you will. Next. And who actually won? Who had the most observations and species? Well, it's somebody with the nomiker King Mush. And I happen to know him. That's Jeffrey Gammon, who uh, is part of our birding community. Excellent all around naturalist now. He used to be just a birder, but he's learned his plants and he's constantly doing iNaturalist observations. And then next most observations was Sandy Bauerschmidt, who's a plant person, a uh, volunteer out at um, Wetlands Park. And uh, this must be Carrie Paddock, who's in our community. Kathy Barger is a photographer that's in our community. And then here, I was fourth, fifth or whatever that is, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and I was actually stuck at the Apopka Art and Foliage Festival during that weekend. So uh, I would say that, you know, it's it, that wouldn't be hard to beat. Um, I'm not sure who that person is. Then again, for the most species, um, Jeffrey Gammon won and Sandy Bauerschmidt was next again. And Kathy Barger is up there and so forth. Um, and most observed species happen to be the uh, American alligator the Anhinga, the Great Blue Heron, Common Gallinule, Brown Anole, Great Egret. And then you can continue looking at them all. Next. And currently we don't have prizes for the winners, but I've floated that to the Nature Conservancy to see if we could figure out any way to honor the winners better. But I tell you, Jeffrey Gammon is really good. So that's a high bar he's setting. So what you're gonna do is step one, download iNaturalist on your phone. Step two, select projects. And that's down in on the iPhone, that's down in this right corner. And in an Android, it's in this menu. So select projects, next. And then search for the project page for the City Nature Challenge, Orange County 2024. Um, I couldn't find it on the phone, even though it had already been created. I had to do it from my computer, and I'll show you the link in a minute so you know how to search for it. But once you've got it from your computer, it'll, through the cloud, it'll be on your phone as well. Next. Yes, so you select that project, Orange County. Next. And... This is what it looks like when it's empty, like it is right now, um, no observations. Um, and that's the URL at the top. I've got it on the next page too. Let's go to the next page. This shows the 2023, how it looks now. All those observations, all those species. And by the way, photos, you, you kind of got to have some evidence before you turn in an observation. So you either need a audio recording or a photo, mostly a photo. And um, people like Jeffrey Gammon, who's a good photographer, he takes actual pictures and then uploads them probably on his computer later. I just do it on my iPhone and uh, I'll show you how that works in a sec. Next. Next, okay. So like I was in South Florida and I saw this grass. I don't know if you can see the, um, what do you call it, the, the, the grass flower thing. Um, and I didn't know, know it, so I took a picture. I uploaded it without any information. 
And Comrade Dijon said flowering plants. Okay. So some of these, you don't even know how old they are. They may be just school children that are getting involved. At least they got it to flowering plants. <laughs> um, but then Tan, Tadenham is a good botanist. And he, he recognized that as Napier grass and wrote that in. And I'm supposed to say, I agree. And that gives one more identification. And I will, when I have a chance, I'm gonna look it up in one of my plant books or online. And if it looks like that, I'm gonna say agree. So that's the way you get the ID. So uh, I'm encouraging you to get started early, uh, playing with iNaturalist, taking pictures of plants and bugs and birds and uh, uploading them. And then you'll be ready. You'll join the project, Orange County. If you'll go back up three more um, slides up, then they'll, they'll see the uh, URL at the top. Yeah, that you have to go to projects and then do this on your computer, city-nature-challenge-2024-orange-county. And then you'll be able to select and join that project. And then it'll be on your iPhone or, or Android ready to go on those days. And yes, um, nothing will happen until those days in late April. Anybody have any questions on it? <laughs> All right, it's fun. So well, I did see we had one question on counting large flocks. You don't um, have to do numbers with, with iNaturalist, just the species. Yeah, yeah with iNaturalist, you don't. Yeah. With um, um, eBird, what you and they have this on their course, but you just try to count by tens the best you can. It's not going to be perfect, and yeah. they know it's not going to be perfect. Sometimes, yeah, and you can count ten, yeah, ten tens in that area because birds tend to fly a certain distance pretty regularly apart. So once you, if you got a huge amount, once you have like a area that you would define as a hundred, you're going to guesstimate how many hundreds you have and believe it or not it actually they said works pretty well so just kind of a good thing and that will be on that course so it's kind of a fun way to learn how to do those things yeah especially for all those fish crows <laughs> <laughs> yes and Any other questions? I know it's, it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And Debbie M wants to know for the bird count, is it both seen and heard? Yes, as long as you can identify it, if you know the call or you can identify the bird scene, if you can't identify it, you don't have to put it in. Um, if it's backlit or too far away or you just don't know what it is, you don't need to count it. It's, it's what you can identify or someone in your group. And I see someone asked about submitting photos. To submit photos, you need to go uh, into the eBird website and that's covered in our video that's on our YouTube. We covered that in that last um, program that we did. So it's, it's pretty easy to do and they love getting the photos and actually they'll post some of the photos on their website. And um, they actually have a live interactive uh, submission map when when it opens up um, on the first day and you can watch live like how many checklists are being submitted. It's a lot of fun. And if you're going to Greenland, please submit a checklist yes. because yes. It, it was gray last year. So if you have a vacation coming up, please. Uh, submit something from Greenland. I think she asked about the na nature challenge. Um, oh, for nature photos. challenge. And uh, whoever asked, do you have the app on your phone already? If so, it will be easier to explain. I, um, no, it won't work. Um, yeah, once you get the app, on, and there are, there are some little videos on it, to how to use it. But at the bottom, it'll say explore, activity, observe. So hit observe, and then it'll hit say 
no media, camera, photo library, or record sound. So then you hit camera, and then the camera of your phone will, you take the picture, and then it'll offer you, do you want to retake it or use this picture? And so then if you're going to use it, you just hit submit. And then you give a name if you know it. If you don't, just hit submit. And it'll be uh, like I showed, different people will give their opinions on what it is until you get something that's research grade. And you can also, if you're a photographer, because I know last year I had trouble with my phone. I, I do remember now because I was submitted, I took pictures with my camera and then went to the website and you can submit pictures also on the website if you're like, if your phone is down, like my phone was down. So I just took some pictures. Now I can't say I got as many as it when you're taking it with your phone a lot quicker and faster, but you know, um, you know, but yeah. you can also do it that way. And it's pretty, it, they, they pretty explain it, how to do it when you go to yeah. the website. And, and actually phone, we have a video from last year about it. And the phone, um, uh, geo locates it. That's very important for iNaturalist that the location mm -hmm. is coded into the picture. But, um, I, I believe that it's pretty automatic on most of our, our phones and cameras nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And with it, when you do use the website, you may have to locate it on a map, but they have it's, it, it walks you through how to do that. Yeah. So you get that point like Deborah said. And you could do it in your backyard or Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive, Mead Gardens, Wakaiwa, you know, get yourself a whole lot of species. Try to run up that number and be the top. <laughs> <laughs> And Martha asked if there's similar city challenges in other parts of the country and how to find them. Yes, go to the full city nature challenge website and explore the website where I got those numbers for the different cities was there and their cities now all over the world. Started in 2016 with just the two cities spread and spread. And during COVID it was had to retool a little bit but now it's all over the world. So it's it's cool to see. I don't see any other questions. No. All right, well, I hope you do both the backyard bird count and uh, start practicing for the city yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Kind of check out what's in your yard too. I mean, there's lots of good plants and I want to say insects in your yard. So, lots of things, even fungus. Pretty and cool. Fungus, yes. What did I say? I found an iNaturalist. What was the name of that? Dead man's toes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a very interesting name. Fungus came up in my yard. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, what's uh, this? You know what you'll find. And even, you know, how would you find? Do you know animal tracks? It, it will you can identify the tracks on iNaturalist too. So that oh. even counts. It's unlike eBird, if you find a feather, you could take a photo of the feather and that counts. Then it's kind of fun to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. Yes. All right. Hope you guys have fun and kind of get out there and bird on those dates. Yeah. Plan ahead. Maybe. Yeah. Karen, your your students would like it. Students and, and family kids mm -hmm. um, we'll, should get, try to get them involved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to stop. Okay.